Hey everybody, thanks for watching. This is a vlog. It should say vlog right there, but I don't feel like making the title. It is 12.30 in the morning on a work day, and I'm doing this thing. So, uh, I just, this is going to be a kind of stripped down one. Alright, this is a match that I played with David. David's my trainer. He trains guys on the PGA Tour, women on the LPGA Tour, and, um... Uh, regular golfers like me. So he hit a snap hook off the first tee, which is very normal for David. Um, <clears throat> he was talking that the other course we usually play Rec Park. A uh, snap hook for a lefty is actually not that bad of a play, but here the range is all down the right hand side of this hole. So uh, for a lefty, he just snapped that close to where the range is, but he actually hit it pretty far. He ends up finding that ball in a pretty pretty good spot actually okay so I'm uh, I'm talking I'm being social but I'm also like trying to go from these are the things that you do the kind of the keys that you that I can key into to make timing not such a big deal I kind of know my personal sinking feels and uh, the flamingo drill is one of them sometimes I need it sometimes I don't almost always I do all right, so uh, I hit a really good drive, yeah, I but I hit I it I into the bunker. As far as solidness, it was super solid, just probably not a driver play here um, in this weather. Usually I could carry, with that shot, I could carry this bunker, but you can see there's some marine layers still left over, and uh, it's uh, kind of cold in the morning, so it just didn't get, get the carry it would have normally gotten. So I'm, I'm in this bunker. This is 100 and... Let's see if I remember. I think it's like 113 yards. This is a. Let's see what, if that's one of my Strixon clubs. Yes, it is. So that means that this is a pitching wedge, and it's like 123 yards, something like that. So, it's a blue pin. That's like a max number, but I'm really just trying to do everything I can to hit this very cleanly, which I did. I took a nice short backswing and uh, made sure I got ball first contact there. So that was good. And uh, bunkers were in pretty good shape. The course is in pretty good shape. They just punched these greens and then they got it back again. All right, so David was just past the range and then he hit a wedge shot Great to shot. there and then he chipped up to that point. I think that's for bogey though I'm, I'm not sure I know that David bogeys this hole from looking in the scar scorecard so I don't know if it's from him missing this one or if it's from something different let's see I uh, can't really see because my thing I think he was in uh, in some punch out trouble so and then got up and down for bogey so this is for my birdie that was really good all right a really good lag putt uh, green in regulation and that putt was conceded as uh, David was walking up to put that in the hole. All right, so this is 575 yards. Yeah, 575 par 5. That was a really good free swing. There's actually trouble. See, that's the road down the left-hand side. So there's actually trouble down the left. So when I don't want to hit a hook, I really I, uh, do my arms first feel, but I, I then really um, stay aggressive with my body. David, you can see that his body still isn't quite working. So uh, he usually, if he doesn't get a lot of warm-up time, he usually starts off with some hooks. And then once he's played a little while, he gets rid of them. All right, so I hit a great drive down the right hand, the right center of this fairway, but it's just such a long hole, and uh, the fairways are still kind of rough and stuff. That it didn't get a ton of rollout so I know that there's a a bunker that's supposed to catch your layup that is 230 some yards out so I only want to hit this like actually I think it was like 245 so I only wanted to hit that like 215 or something and that was an awesome hybrid shot really good hybrid shot David's third shot Good solid strike, trying to hold it off, and he hits it onto the front of the green. Still have about 
35 feet left or so for his birdie. And I have a hundred and yeah, it's actually like 111 yards. This is a 50 re wedge. Pulled it just a little bit, and it looked like it just barely got over the bunker. We'll say that could, that could be pretty good. Barely, it looked Extremely. like it just barely got over the bunker, and then trickled towards the hole. But what actually happened? It actually landed pin high. It was an obstacle illusion. So that's David's bid for birdie, and he is that left for a par. And this is my putt for birdie. You can see my uh, my left hand there swinging it with with the palm open. That's uh, one of my keys to keep from yanking it around. Okay, so solid par for me on this 575 par 5, so that that's acceptable. And here is David. Remember, I'm one up in the match at this point. So David loses that hole. So now I'm two up in the match after two. And it gets late early when you're playing a nine hole match play match. And, uh, but I gotta keep it together. All right, so this is like 385 or something like that, 390, par four. Hit a very good drive down the uh, right center of the fairway. David uh, was seeing a lot of my swings from the Be Better Golf School and stuff and was commenting that I had been playing really well. So he was. Uh, he wanted to play with me to kind of to see if uh, it was just social media hype or if I actually was swinging well. So swinging well so far. So then David, uh, after those snap hooks, hit a block, but only a slight one. I think he's in the fairway actually. So I have a. Uh, it was 385, and I have just over 100 yards. This is another 50 degree gap wedge. I believe and same thing you can tell with my irons I'm fighting the pulls just a little bit my divots are great as far as it's ball and then divot uh, really good but I am fighting the pulls just a little bit which is comes from being out of sequence slightly David uh, hit one just kind of scoopy just kind of added loft and it fell out of sky short in the bunker he actually, we played nine holes, and David told me he was in seven bunkers in this nine holes. So, a lot of bunker play for David. So, this is my putt for birdie. So, I'm really trying to pace this out. The greens were punched about two and a half weeks ago, so they're not totally perfect. They're not totally back to what they should be. Like, I hammered that putt pretty hard. It still came up well short. So David's putting for par and uh, surprised me that, he didn't surprise me, but he uh, uh, deliberated about this a while be before letting me know that, yeah, I was going to have to putt that. Perfect. You never know, match play. So uh, I always assume I'll have to putt everything. See, that, that's what I was doing. So he's like, oh, you better mark it. He didn't want to see me nonchalantly miss that and get into a controversy. So my ball's marked, and that's David is in for uh, his third bogey in a row, unfortunately, to start. So I'm really trying to concentrate on this. This is uh, three feet, just over three feet. Uh, I don't know, maybe just under, somewhere in there. It looks about the length, a little bit more than the length of my putter, which is when you do that Phil Mickelson circle drill. That's the putt you always practice, right? But these Poana green, uh, this is actually, this is a kind of a blend. They're, they're supposed to not be Poana greens here at Skylinks, but it's grown in. So anyway, these greens in Southern California, anyway, are extremely difficult to make short putts on. So that puts me three up after three holes going to the par three. We're playing from the black tees today, which is like a total like 69.50 for all 18 holes. So um, this hole is long. It's 238, and basically it's getting a little bit warmer out too. So I used my, it was kind of an in-between. I used my monster hybrid, and I hit an awesome shot. Oh, yeah. Kind of like a medium-high draw, oh, yeah. maybe a little bit lower of 
of a draw and it hit just an awesome shot and uh, but I didn't know where it went I knew that it was straight on a line right for the green David uh, kind of pulled across that one and put it basically pin high but in another bunker he's in the bunker to the left so I hit that instead of it was 238 I hit this about 255 unfortunately um, I, I, it just would have been too far to try to hit my three hybrid there but uh, so I have to practice yeah anyway I have to practice on learning how to hit shorter distances with my monster hybrid anyway that yeah that was a tight lie kind of a, a mix of sand and dirt but like matted down from the wetness and uh, thin grass there so anyway the lie was poor but the shot was even much worse I should have used less loft and uh, accepted the situation I was in so anyway, that's me. I'll have that left for my bogey, actually. And this is di for David's par. Uh, so I'm three up in the match at the moment, but to stay three up, I'll have to make this. And the way, the way that I am with in match play anyway, when I've when I've played it, which I play a lot uh, of match play against friends and things, is uh, I have a tendency to get to get leads early and then give them all back and then end up just tying. So uh, I'm trying to change that. So I'm three up at the moment. I gotta make this one to stay three up. And I did. Good catch by the hole, but it was a, a good tempo in that in that putt. I uh, kept my head down nicely through that one. All right, so this is a dog leg left. And that was, a, I got pretty loose at the top of my backswing. Just kind of went to a sloppy position, never really got set. And uh, cut across it, but it actually went, uh, instead of hitting kind of a draw to the corner, I hit just kind of a uh, fade to the center okay. of the fairway. Too good? No, yeah, good. David did a really good drive. You can see, like, once David gets warmed up physically, he becomes a, a much better player. So then... Um, this is 103 yards. Really good tempo through that swing. But it came up a little bit short. I think I may have just kind of got a little scoopy with that. It might have been, uh, club selection might have been a little off. All right, David, David had a really good shot. You can tell it's, that's a nice... That's the kind of divot I would like to, to make more often. You know, just kind of a little patch, not a, like, not a major trench. Okay, so this is my putt for birdie. To go four up. Oh, actually, it's not to go four up because David has a birdie putt. U-turn lip out. That was a really good putt. You guys can see the uh, snail trail there on the dew. So, all right, cool. So that's a par for me once I tap this one in. You guys can see this vlog's a little bit longer because I just did not feel like editing it down. And that's a par for David. So I remain three up with four to go. Three up with four to go. That's right. So here, uh, this is a par five. This is about five... 65 a dog leg left that building used to have a, a, a giant Boeing sign on it and people would tell you uh, if you're safe to aim at the Boeing sign if you wanted to be brave you would aim at the windsock which is over on the left so I hit mine uh, right at the windsock but hit it low but it scooted through all the trees actually this is where my ball was I didn't even have to drop it it's 238 to the green from here which is the same yardage that I had on that last par 3 and I actually hit that, and I figured I couldn't see the ball land, but I figured I had come up short right of the green. Actually, I had hit it pin high on the green. So uh, it shows me that if I get it lined up pretty well, then that three hybrid can go far. All right, David hit it into the greenside bunker into, but then 
there was kind of a, a hard spot in that bunker or he just misjudged where to enter the sand with his uh, leading edge of his club, flew it way over the green. Now he has this up and down for par. So David has that about 12 footer for par and that's my ball down there. The, that's, a, that's basically pin high from the shape of this green. I was over to the right a little bit, kind of just to the right of where David's flag is. I do. So this is a long putt. It looks like it's going to be short, but the thing about playing early in the morning is 25 minutes ago, 30 minutes ago, that would have come up about a foot shorter in distance than it did. But uh, I have that for my birdie, and that's David. David's in for That's a great par after hitting that poor bunker shot. So this is to win the hole. If I win this hole, I'll be four up with three to play. So this is to win the match. I want to take advantage of this, because why let somebody else in? I mean, just finish this. That was a misread. Stroke wasn't too bad. Had maybe a little bit of early movement, but uh, that was that was picking out a good spot when I was behind the ball. But then when I was over the ball, kind of losing my spot in a Jim Fury kind of way. Kind of lost my spot and uh, and rolled it over either the wrong thing or just indecisively rolled it. So this is 163 yards, actually 160. Eight yards because it's a blue pin all the way back there. That's a seven iron over water. Really good divot there. I've been hitting uh, my iron shots off of tees really well for me. I've been hitting my iron shots off the grass eh, just so so. David actually hit that ball in the water. It went in the water near the bank. It, it must have hit a rock like, like four inches down and then jumped out onto the bank. Par. So he's got that remaining for a par. So I have this putt to win the match. If I make this putt, I'll be uh, I'll win the match four and two. That misses and is conceded. So then uh, David must make his putt if David makes this putt, he will be two down with two to play. So let's see what happens here. He misses. All right, so I won my match. And now, uh, which uh, is always even if you're kind of uh, rolling. It's always kind of a relief. So I kind of got, a, mentally, I kind of deflated myself a little bit here. And I started thinking about there's trouble on the left there. So... I hit a big block. Same thing, just a little bit loose. I didn't actually get set at the top. I just kind of went to a position. I didn't actually get, I didn't accomplish anything with my backswing. I just kind of went to a, a spot. And that's not really what the point of a backswing is. It isn't just to like go to a, a point in space. It's actually, there's stuff to do. There's a reason you're doing that. So then I try to punch out, and that was horrific. <laughs> Just throw my hand up there. All right, so this is 169 yards. This is a, for some reason, I hit an 8 iron. I don't know why. And uh, it came out just short. Should have hit, oh, I think because of the trees, I wanted to get over the trees. That's why I wanted some extra loft. And uh, putted it, got kind of bobbly on me. And you can see my concentration level. I'm kind of manufacturing it now. I'm trying to be concentrated, but not really. And that was really an early look with the head, something I have to monitor. You just don't have time to practice all these different things you need to do. Like uh, Martin Chuck says, it's layers, layers of skills. OK, so uh, I hit a great drive here, though, kind of a revenge drive here. You know what I'm talking about? This is the ninth hole. This is uh, 4.55. And then David hit a, another hook. So uh, I hit this. Uh, we actually measured it. It was 2.95. And then kind of uh, 
there's see the there's water short left and you can see that was a, a non-aggressive swing but I hit it pin high on the green but uh blocked it out to the right because of, probably mentally because of the water so I always walk my putts out so this is for birdie and uh, at the moment I'm two over par so this would be for one over par because that last hole was a double bogey no it was a bogey so yeah two bogeys so that's two over oh building your reactionary golf swing this is it so this is a uh, a promo for building your reactionary golf swing it's available now this is kind of like the soft launch this is the intro for it so we're kind of going through all the different things that you see this intro that i cut goes through the, all the parts of the swing from the takeaway to the top to the transition crucial part of the, of the video series to the roll of the lower body that's what that those shots are about and then putting it all together it's called building your reactionary golf swing available now hey everybody this is the building blocks to building your reactionary golf swing here with me i have jeff the long drive champion and tony the teacher who came up with this thing called the reactionary golf swing both through uh, years of experience as a uh, pga pro and also uh, even probably more importantly getting very deep into the science of what really creates power and consistency to make uh, normal people Hey guys, thanks for watching that. I wanted to let everybody know that now available, this is kind of the soft launch, is this, building your reactionary golf swing. So when you, uh, when you get this, you, this is kind of what it is. Uh, it is eight different videos, all the, about, and supplemental content, all about um, building your reactionary golf swing. So uh, going into it, you will see uh, kind of the introduction here. But uh, going into it, you will see introduction, the grip, the takeaway, the top and the transition, going into impact as well, shaping shots, the role of the lower body, the reactionary golf power fields with world champion Jeff Flagg, and uh, the wrap up kind of putting it all together. It is a full video course on how to do this thing, which I think is absolutely the best way that I've ever seen of swinging a golf club. Because uh, to me, the thing that really matters in getting better at golf is being able to have sync in your swing. And reactionary golf kind of answers the question of, okay, how are you going to sync your swing so, uh, it has the most complete answer for that question. And uh, basically, it takes a swing. Uh, you know, you always, you, you never know what your timing is going to be like from day to day. And this really takes timing and um, gives you the keys that you can use to uh, not have to rely so much on timing and know what uh, the motor control patterns are to be able to do it. So it's available right now at bebettergolf.weebly.com slash premium. Building your reactionary golf swing. Check it out, everybody. It's available now, and uh, it is uh, something we're super proud about. Uh, Tony Lutzak, Jeff, and I are really proud about this. So uh, we hope we know you're going to enjoy it. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.